And we go. Welcome everybody to Dial R Sulik Tactics in this Eternal Evolution deep dive video. We're going to be covering none other than Werewolf by Night, Mooka. Alright, so Mooka is kind of an interesting character. Uh, as you see, there he is on my free-to-play account. I got him almost legendary because uh, it, it seems like he's easy to get. They gave us uh, copies of him with Daniel, which I have also at legendary. And... Uh, as soon as I switch cameras, we're going to discuss Mooka before we go into the deep dive. So, this is the summoner team. Obviously, this is a free-to-play account, and I am lacking Scooter and Hattie because I didn't pull at all on their banner, given that uh, I don't spend money and limited tickets were in short supply. So, if I was running um, summoners, I would probably, even though I got, now that I got four, now that I got Daniel, I probably still would run... Muka as a tank and then have one healer on the team. Now Muka, if you don't have Daniel, say you only have Kalaza, Senwe, and Muka. Well, in that case, I would say you want to gear Muka like an attacker, which I have him geared as on my free-to-play account. But I'm probably going to switch this up. If you have Daniel, uh, and, and he's a summoner, by the way, everybody, in case you didn't get that. If you do have Daniel... You can, for reasons which we'll get into in the deep dive, you can gear him effectively as a tank. And he works... Even you'll see footage of him in Hellboss tanking the Hellboss quite well. So, stay tuned, strap in, sit down, crack a drink, and let's go over everything there is to know about Mooka. And then it'll be up to you guys to decide if you want to gear him as an attacker or a tank. So, strap in. Let's dive in. Hey, Mooka. Here, boy. Here, boy. Come on, Mooka. <laughs> All right, so there's my Mooka. Uh, he's Immortal plus two. Got a lot of copies. Is summoning for Daniel, uh, which is the banner still up, by the way, if you see this uh, anywhere around uh, Christmas time. So let's dive right in. As I said in the introduction, you're going to build him, or you can build him multiple ways, depending on if you have... Daniel, if you have uh, Screw and Hattie, if you have if you have the full summoner team, like all five, so right there, as you see, I do. You know, my Screw and Hattie is not quite developed, but since I have all five Screw and Hattie, you can use them very well at this level. Um, I want to run Muka as a tank because, as a damage dealer, he's just not cutting it, and he's really squishy. So I'm gonna jump right to my gear. And I'm going to show you how I build him as a tank. And then I'm going to show you um, footage of game modes where I run him that way effectively. So he does gain HP based on his uh, attack. It's, I think it's 12 points. He gets, what, 12 HP per one point of attack. So right there, he's got a HP built into his kit. His exclusive, which we'll look at, is also HP. You're gonna want to run a mix of uh, HP and attack. Um, you can run just all vigorous sets if you want. I'm running one set of attack, mainly because I don't have, <laughs> uh, I don't think I have, uh, currently I don't have hands with HP on it, like vigorous hands with HP. So I am running one attack set, which gives them a little bit, and it's working for me, so I probably won't change it. And then I have two vigorous sets. So run HP uh, percent primary on the hands, head, Damage reduction, because you're going to run them as a tank on the boots. And then look for HP percent um, secondaries on the top three pieces. As you see right here, HP plus one, HP plus one, HP plus one. Uh, so basically, I'm building them out just as a as a meat shield, right? It's going to be a distraction so that your other summoners can get up and rolling. And if you were going to run him as a damage dealer... Then uh, the game recommends Hero and Gluttony. So that that is the ideal set you're going to want to run as a damage dealer because he has a lot of attack speed um, buffs or mechanics built into his kit. So, but of course, if you have Emma, put your best Gluttony set on her first. She's the highest priority uh, before you start put, putting stuff on Muka because it is kind of going to be wasted. He does, he is that bad as a damage dealer. But you want Gluttony. You will want um, around 60, 65% uh, 
crit rate and then go as much uh, crit damage and attack as you can. That's how you would build him as an attack as an attack dealer. So now I want to look at his exclusive first. As you see, it's an HP percent uh, exclusive, which is kind of weird since he's a gluttony character or a gluttony recommended character. But it works great for me as a tank. I'm, I'm not going to put anything into his exclusive. I don't think it's worth it. The 10, you know, the exclusive is giving HP, but all of the, the effects are, are damage based. So just activating it, uh, Mooka and his feral wolves can rip and tear wounds open, increasing damage by 1% of Mooka's attack each time. The effects last 5% and can stack up to 10 times. Okay, cool. More more damage. It's a dot. It's gonna, well, it's not really a dot. They're just more attack on of all his and his wolves attack. Uh, the 10, the 10, uh, level 10 of his exclusive, the howl increases feral wolf crit rate by 20% and crit damage by 10. Is 10 worth it? I'd say no, because he doesn't do that much damage. He is not a good damage dealer. Don't put, don't waste your runes on this guy. I would recommend just activating it and leave him as he is. Even if he is your, you know, if you have three summoners and you have to run him, you're going to replace um, him eventually. Kalaza and Senway, if you're going to have any other two <coughs> free to play, those two will do just fine. Uh, his third, you know, his his max one looks nice. Gives him another Feral Wolf. <coughs> and maybe then he can do damage. But it's not worth it, guys. Not worth it. <coughs> oh, pardon me. All right. Now let's get in to the boring part of his kit. And as you see right here, like I do have 1.2 million health on this guy. So the boring part of his kit now. So his ultimate... Mooka jumps at the enemy, it flicks 600% attack as damage, and he enters Blood Wolf status, which increases his attack speed by 500. <coughs> oh, woof, woof. His crit rate by 30, which is, so if you're going to build him for damage, 60, 65, don't go higher than 70 though, because then you're just going to overcap, and your crit damage by 10 for 7 seconds. The talent modifier... The duration of this is extended by three seconds and it provides additional life steal. I'm most, as a, as building him as a tank, I don't care about the attack speed increase, but I do care about the life steal because I'm building him with HP. So the life steal is going to be handy for the tank build. Everything else is going to go to the damage build. His summon, summon one wolf, and you're gonna get two wolves after you put the talent uh, a modifier or activate it. Summon one wolf or two to fight alongside Mooka. The wolf inherits uh, only 45% of his attack, defense, and health, but 100% of the crit rate. It gets damage reduction and damage bonus, or 100% of his damage reduction and damage bonus. There can only be two wolves at the same time. And then that's basically it. Basically, he's gonna summon some melee wolves are going to go out there and they're going to do melee things. They're also going to kind of tank for you as well, so they are beneficial. Then he's uh, going to howl, which is another one of his skills. He howls into the sky to empower his wolves, increasing their attack speed by 300 and speed, which is movement speed, by 1,000 for 9 seconds. And the talent modifier, he gets the same boost. So that, you know, attack speed, that's going to go towards the gluttony set. Uh, all of this is basically just um, damage build. He is going to be attacking more, so he's going to be getting a little bit more life steal. So he is going to heal himself up a little bit, but otherwise, very straightforward. Just increase speed, you know, a little shot of adrenaline to him and his buddies. And then his passive battle hunger. At the start of battle, increase Mooka's HP by 12 for every one attack. So that's what I'm saying at the beginning when I was showing you my gear. Got to kind of crunch a little bit, which is why I'm okay with running one hero set because it's going to give me more HP. Now, obviously, uh, is running one more vigorous set, which is going to give me 15% HP, going to be more than what I'm getting from the attack? Probably not. I'm not going to run the math, but just my head tells me probably not, but I, I don't have another hand piece, so maybe at later I'll, I'll put that, make it all vigorous, but for now... Uh, it's got a little bit of attack, but that attack is benefiting me because I'm getting 12 HP for every one point of attack. 
and uh, when in battle, each basic attack increases Mooka's attack by 6% for 3 seconds, stacking up to, well, si for 6 seconds with the modifier, with the talent, and the effect stacks up to 6 times. So he's ramping his attack, but you're not going to benefit from that attack isn't going to get converted into HP because the HP conversion is done right at the start of battle. So keep that in mind. You're not going to ramp his attack and ramp his HP pool. That's not how it works. No skin. We went over his exclusive. Uh, there's my equipment again. Now let's go into battle and I'm going to show you guys where I use him. Um, I am currently 6.8 power. Uh, I got a full set of summoners, you know, I'm at stage 40 in the instance. You're not going to use him in story mode. I do use him in the elite campaign because you need three teams and I do like a summoner team. So I'll show you my summoner team. I do believe it is still set up properly. We're going to switch uh, so they're in team one, just so you guys don't have to watch through a bunch. So the proper commander you're going to use is either uh, the new guy or Discar, uh, depending on whatever the best one you have. Uh, I prefer the new guy because it's a sustained 25% attack bump, which is gonna help Muka because at the start of battle, it's gonna get that bump, and that bump is gonna get it be converted into HP. Um, prototypes, there is a new uh, summoner prototype for the, the, the first slot, uh, but it is very, very, very rare and exclusive. If you have it, run it. If you don't, um, Pick your highest level one that gives you the most stats. Uh, since I don't have a tank or a healer, I'm also just picking whatever is going to give me the best stat bump. All right, so let's, and I'm running Muka right out front to uh, take all the heat. So let's see how he does. He is going to usually die, but watch his health. If he can get to his ultimate, he's gonna jump back behind them and summon his wolves, which is really all I want him to do, because his wolves are gonna tank too. So here comes Mooka, and I guess his wolves isn't his ultimate, but look at that, we won already. So he, he did what he had to do. He tanked for me, and uh, he summons, which Daniel, as soon as four or more summon, four or, or more than four summons are on the field, Daniel's going to get his aura. He's going to do good things. So uh, I use him in this, uh, the elite campaign. I also use him in um, one of the arenas. So I do run a full summoner team in arena. The exact, basically the exact same team that you just saw. I'm running in arena as well, and I'm using him as my tank. And then, obviously, uh, you're going to run... I actually, in Twilight Lands, on the summon bosses, I don't run Mooka. Uh, in the lower levels, where I can just kind of power through, yes. But in the upper levels, uh, I run two healers, and then Daniel, Kalaza, and Senway. So, but you can use him on these summon bosses, or su the summon nodes, paths, I guess, in Twilight. Uh, they did add summon specific uh, bosses or paths in Twilight with this last patch. So you can use him there. Um, he's not really, you're not going to use him. He's not good in Disa, Terra, Sincero, uh, Soul Mine. You're not even really going to use him in the faction, right? In this, because there are much better characters that you can use in here versus than Mooka. Uh, so you're not going to use him there. You are going to use him, though, in Alter. So, I am currently on hell. Uh, I, I saved this because I wanted to show you guys this footage. So I do run him in hell. This is the team, exact same team I have been showing you uh, with the exact same commander and, and pretty much the exact same prototypes. So let's run it through. I want you guys to see how well this team performs in the hell boss in Alter. So, um, I've, I've had this footage up before. I do believe it's on the Daniel video. Uh, I do run two healers because running two healers on the first boss ensures that my characters don't die. So they will stay up the entire time. They will not get uh, nuked by those fireballs from the sky. 
and they will actually take off uh, a few bars. So let's just bear with me here for a minute, or you guys can skip ahead a little bit. Um, this is not really a showcase of Muka, but this is a tip that you guys can use to uh, better your altar runs. And using two healers here, I'm saving my Masrani for the final boss, and you don't need a healer at all in uh, the second boss, which is strictly the summon boss. Go, go, Ravenna. Yeah, see, I'm not gonna lose my, my Nagrama. And Nagrama's actually doing decent damage, uh, keeping up uh, almost with Ravenna. 20 seconds, guys, sorry to put you through this. And I'm not even gonna let this run go through. Yeah, yeah, whack him, Nagrama. Nagrama is a good character. I do have a spotlight or a, a how to build video on him. If you want to figure out, I do have a how to build on Serena, Crete, and Ravenna as well. There we go. So I made it to three. I took down three uh, bars uh, with with the team one. Now here we go. So Muka is up front. Now watch the damage meter. Muka's going to suck. He's going to suck regardless of how you build him. He is still alive. So now he's doing his ultimate. He's going to increase his life steal. He's got his wolves out on the field as well. And he is, the boss is turned around and is attacking Muka, and he's still up. Still up. In hell. Got to his second ultimate. He is going to die. But now, as you see, all of my other summoners are ramped up. Colossus crit rate is ramped up. Look at Muka's wolves. They're still on the field. So the boss is now targeting the wolves one by one. So technically, well, not technically. I can make an argument to say that Muka is still tanking. The other wolf now is taking the hits. The other wolf, his summon wolf, is still not dead. There, it is finally dead. So Muka and his summons are finally dead. But they took all of the heat off of my entire team. So Muka did exactly what I wanted him to do there by tanking that boss. And I think that is the the best use um, I am currently getting out of my Muka, building him as a tank. So I hope that helped you guys. Um, so yes, he sucks, but yes, he does have uses. And like I said in the introduction, if you don't have uh, a full summoner team, then just run him as attack and use him because uh, Daniel is going to buff up the attack of his summons. If you have Daniel's, ex wait, it is not his exclusive. It is his passive. So just build up Daniel a bit. Um, you can use him to buff up those wolves attack. If you're going to build him attack though, build him with a gluttony set and then load up on crit rate, crit damage and attack. All right, guys, the safe word of the day, if you've made it this far, is puppy. <laughs> so put puppy in the comments, and I will know you made it right till the end, and I will thank you profusely. <clears throat> till then, uh, I'll see you guys later. Cheers. Peace. Bye-bye. I got you.